Well, hello, my lovely friends. It is Tuesday, and I am here with a little bit of a different video for you. This is not a scrapbook layout. This is a canvas, and since it is an art party over at the Crafty Maven Getaway, I thought you might like to see how you can incorporate a photo onto a canvas in a very artistic, messy way. And so it has been probably two or three years since I made a canvas like this, so I'm out of practice. And it didn't turn out exactly as I wanted, but I needed a birthday present for my ex-stepmom, Christy, which if you've followed me for a while, you know she is effectively my mother. Um, and she's my mother in a lot of ways. She was my stepmom for 15 years. So I printed out this picture of us and my girls. This was last Christmas, 2018. And I printed it on sticker paper because I didn't want to deal with hot glue or anything that was going to make it stick up. And sometimes when you use traditional scrapbook tape, it doesn't want to stick. And so it just gives it enough tack that you can start to build around your photo with some metal findings and kind of it kind of works out because you're going to see i'm going to add a bunch of gesso to this once i figure out some placement of my metal and i'm going to go to town with some gesso so that light tack on the back of the photo is going to hold it down while i go to town so I basically just dug into a few of my metal. I had like a bag full of metal from Tim Holtz and Prima Junkyard Findings. Um, one of these products is from a company called Moments and it's just metal heart stickers. And I believe a couple are from My Road and a couple are from Etsy stores. Back when I used to do these canvases for my girls. Um, they also really enjoyed me doing this for their friends and so I used to be better at the color <laughs> but I think the colors that I used were a little bit dark and don't don't leave at the end when you think I'm saying goodbye um, because I I go back I'm not happy with the color and you'll see me you know say bye and yet I'm I'm coming back to finish it because it was really bothering me so um, dig into your stash if you have some Tim Holtz that you haven't used now that little Christmas Santa I basically bought some flat back crystals and I believe those are Tim Holtz or uh, tonic Studios, something like that but they uh, that is a I, I rubbed a transferred image with tape onto metal and then I just stuck the metal onto the crystal and that's the Santa Claus that you see there and I'd made that years ago um, I'd probably have to revisit on how to do that <laughs> but um, if you're interested in a tutorial on how to put uh, an image onto metal and transfer that with sticky tape let me know so I'm just figuring out I want to fill as many of the places that I can and I did have that one half which kind of reminded me of 12 and then I had the numbers 25 or 2 and 5 and I glue I like the thought of putting those down because it was for Christmas even though this wasn't Christmas Day it's symbolic of you know that time of year and we all have on Christmas shirts and that sort of thing I also of course love flowers and I had these little light fixtures that I thought were very cute and I could like that one right there I could hang off of the out um, canvas <laughs> I'm tongue-tied this morning um, so as you can see you know I'm just adding metal elements now I got when I went to creativation I got this rapid fuse quick dry they were handing out everywhere you went and it's supposed to stick to everything so metal plastic canvas and it did a pretty good job on some things but um, it, it was almost like super glue and it did stick to my fingers so much to the fact that I couldn't open my phone <laughs> with my fingerprint but um, so if you ever want to do anything and not leave fingerprints by the way you can <laughs> you can use super glue on your fingerprints 
That didn't sound very good, but <laughs> it's fun fact. I couldn't get in my phone, and I didn't know that. So I'm just, I, I showed you there that I've got this little tin can full of metal that I've just dumped in, and I'm figuring out how to fill every single little hole and have some of them hang off. Now, if you just fill every single hole and you don't have anything hanging off, it looks kind of boxy and strange. And since this is so dimensional, you really don't want that. I would suggest that you have some things hanging off just a little bit. That one element that looks like a wheel, I'm gonna take that off because it's two dimensional compared to everything else. The crystal is a little bit dimensional. The the bird at the top is a little bit dimensional. And of course the zipper is a little bit dimensional, but that one element actually has a screw on the back. So it's an actual knob. It was just a little bit heavy. So I'm gonna replace that. And I know this is a long video, so <laughs> bear with me. If you wanna learn this technique, it's a really fun, easy, inexpensive way. I mean, you, I have made one for my ex-husband years ago, and he is very much mechanical and hands-on, and so I just went into the garage and found like spark plugs and a little baby wrench and light bulb little fixtures and knobs and screws and springs and literally things that were broken that were pieces of metal and um, the color came out beautiful it was more of a gun metal that I I did all over it and it was very grungy and I actually think that between that one and the one that I made true for her room those were my two favorite hers was very very pastel and floral and I really loved it and then his was very grungy and it had a little bit of patina and some gunmetal. And out of all the ones I've done, even for my girl, my my girl's friends, <laughs> um, those have been my two favorite because one was really soft and one was really grungy, if that makes sense. So I think that works better for this type of canvas. But um, you know, you just gotta play around with color. And like I said, I'm out of practice on color. And it really does take a little bit of practice because you're blending colors and sometimes you don't want them to get muddy and sometimes when you're blending it just you know you got to play with it i'll show you you'll see how i struggle towards the end so where i could not use that rapid fuse where it didn't want to stick i just used a hot glue gun you can even if you are really good with a hot glue gun you can even make designs with a clear glue stick and that lower flower on the bottom of the picture there didn't want to stick with that rapid fuse so i used a, a pretty good blob of glue stick glue and it popped it up which was perfect because it gave it dimension but when i painted it i painted over it beautifully and it was just a perfect um you know mix of dimension and so you can paint over glue stick that's that's not a problem. If you're really good, you can write somebody's name in glue stick. I actually pulled that off one time and it didn't look horrible, but <laughs> I'm not the best at that. So here's where you see I'm going to do that. And it just, it's clear. And as long as you let it dry, it's going to paint over beautifully. And so, uh, as you can see, I'm just dipping into my heavy gesso. Now I do suggest super heavy or heavy gesso because you want coverage regular gesso is not going to cover over this metal it's gonna you're gonna have to do well i mean it will but you have to do layer and layer and layer if you do it that way so instead of wasting hours of your time doing that you can just quickly use a layer of super heavy gesso and it does dry out quickly i bought this huge tub back when i was making canvases and it's quite dry even though it's been sealed in my cabinet so you'll want to be uh, careful with leaving that container open or not buying too big of a tub like i did unless you're really into something like this so 
I'm showing you this part where I'm drawing it because that doesn't show very well. I'm going to show you another portion. And if you get the heat gun close enough to this super heavy gesso, it's going to bubble on you. And I want that effect. I want it to look grungy. I want it to, um, it's not burning it, but it is bubbling up. There you go. So see how that looks? So it makes it look weathered. And that's exactly the look I'm going for. And there are some bits and pieces around the metal that looked weathered as well. So I think what I'm doing here, I just grabbed some wax paper and a little bit of washi tape to secure the photo. And I grabbed some of my spray inks and I'm testing them out here for color. Some of them are so old. I used to be a huge Lindsay Stamp Gang fan and I have so many colors, but some of the nozzles are stuck and you know, some of them have dried crusty, some of them have leaked. <laughs> so I'm not as familiar with the colors anymore and I thought this would be a good way to test them first and get all the crusties off so it doesn't drop off on my canvas and figure out what colors I want. Now, this color I'm about to test is called Grab a Guy Gold, and I thought that it would look more golden. I'm looking for Christmas colors. And so, I, on paper, it does look more golden. On this gesso, on this canvas, it does not look golden. It looks bright yellow. And that ends up bothering me greatly because it kind of looks Jamaican. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is not Jamaican. This is um, Christmas. So I, I end up putting a bunch of that Grab a Guy gold on here, but I go back after I wave goodbye and I stare at it and stare at it and I go, no, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna have to put more green on it. And so you're gonna see how I fix it. But just know, if you don't like your colors, you can just go over them with more gesso. You can just go over them with more paint. It's super easy as long as, I mean, even if you made mud colors, you can go over it with gesso and start over. So I like it better as it turned out towards the end. I still think I could have tweaked it a little bit more, but Bab talked me into stopping and said, it looks great. You don't need to do any more. Stop trying to fix something that's not broken. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop. And so had my little cheerleader with me, you know. Um, so I'm just going to town. Sometimes, you know, I'll spray directly on the canvas and just blend that in. Sometimes I'll dip my brush into the bottle if your nozzle's stuck. Just, you know, you're painting here, basically. You're just spraying, painting, drying, spraying, painting, drying. And you can make as many layers as you want, but like I said, it's it's best to let it dry in between. And you'll get some pooling in between these metal pieces, and that's okay, because you want colors that are varied. So where it's lighter red on one part, it's going to be a deeper red, and it's going to look very watercolory. And um, you want those different colors, and that texture. It adds it adds an effect of texture to what's already highly textured and dimensional. But you can see I'm adding the red here. I do like the red and green. I like those colors very much. Let's see, they are um, bells of Ireland green and rhododendron rose gold. I'm sorry, rose, red rose, rhododendron, red rose. I was so worried about saying the word rhododendron <laughs> that I messed up red rose. Um, but the grab a guy gold, I don't know if it's gone bad or I just, I didn't like it on here. But it does, once I cover it up mostly, it does add just a little bit of shimmer and sheen underneath that looks golden to a degree, like a, a lightness to the canvas, which you don't want it just boring in two colors. So um, you just gotta you just gotta play around. So since I had that crystal there on the bottom, I end up adding that little crystal bottle there to the right, and I just glued that down. Now I'm taking the photo. I'm taking the wax paper off the photo to show you close up. I added a couple of sprinkles of gold glitter, just very, very little. I mean, it's already got so much going on. But I'm like, 
Okay, this is bothering me. <laughs> I need to fix this. So I'm going to cover up almost all of this yellow. And it's going to peek through, like I said. And I didn't dab it up or dry it up because this is the final... I don't think I dabbed it up. I might, might have just a little bit, but I left most of this pooling so it would make those pooling effects and that pooling color. So that little heart, that metal heart next to the crystal turns out beautiful It's because it was textured and it was pooling and it just looks very dimensional and it's one of the flattest pieces on the canvas. So you can see the green looks to me, much better than all of that yellow. It makes it more Christmassy instead of like I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> and the reason why I made this for Christy, it is her birthday. We're I'm taking her to lunch on Friday, but she um, loves Christmas. She's crazy about Christmas. So she's got so many decorations and she is going to love this. She's always been a big fan of my canvases or my artwork or paintings or scrapbooks, whatever the case may be. Um, when I was quilting, she was begging for a quilt. And I, you know, before that I was doing a 32 count cross stitch on linen with beadwork and she was crazy about that. So she's got a little bit of my crafty love through all the years. And I would have to say she's been my longest supporting fan of my life. <laughs> so when you don't know what to make a loved one, you know, go with something that means something near and dear to them. Like she loves that I hand make her items. She's going to love that this is a picture of me and my girls, just the four of us. And she's going to love putting this out for Christmas. And it's kind of a grungy Christmas. I will give you that. But that's the final canvas. There are close-ups where you can see it's very textural. Um, you know, it, it does, that um, gesso is thick enough. It does add some texture on its own as well. So I hope you like this video. I know it's a little different than my norm, but I wanted to share something with you that was very art party. Head over to the Crafty Maven Getaway and see their Facebook and blog, and I will talk to you later. Ta-ta for now. Bye.